the earliest and also the most indirect of the Transpennine routes into the West Riding was that of the Manchester and Leeds Railway, completed in 1841. Like the pioneer North-South Line into the region, the North Midland Railway, it was engineered by George Stevenson. But in this case, the rugged landscape forced him to abandon his cherished idea of a 1 in 330 as a maximum gradient. He did well to keep the steepest incline on the Yorkshire side of the Pennines to a reasonable 1 in 160 by tunnelling through the watershed at Summit, south of Tormenden. Before following the sinuous and extremely constricted upper reaches of the Calder Valley, the line then avoided the key centres of Halifax, Huddersfield and Dewsbury but did manage to surf Wakefield prior to reaching Normanton. From where, much to its chagrin, the company had to share the tracks of the North Midland into Leeds. The major engineering work on the route was the one mile, 1,125 yard tunnel at Summit. The longest in the world when it was completed at a cost of 251,000 pounds. In 1847, the Manchester and Leeds became the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway. For many years, an appalling line which earned the description of the probably the most degenerative railway in the kingdom, owing to its disregard of the punctuality and passengers' comfort, as well as a general restrictive policy. Feelings ran particularly high in the West Riding. The company was a target of insult and ridicule at every opportunity, and a favourite pantomime doggerel began. He went to Bradford, fought to dine, by the Lancashire and Yorkshire line. He waited three weeks at Bleak Lawmore, and while he complained, the porter swore that he ought to have started a month before. Lawmore was amongst the notorious junction stations on the system, others being Murfield and Tomerden, and was on the important northern extension through Halifax to Bradford Exchange. It was served by a feeder line from the Spen Valley, giving a direct link between Bradford and Wakefield. And it was also close to the point when many expresses left the company's metals to continue over the Great Northern into Leeds. The Lancashire and Yorkshire lost the opportunity of reaching the city in its own right. During the latter part of the 19th century, the company reformed itself and became quite respectable. By this time, it had built the now defunct branches to Rishworth, Stainland and Dewsbury, as well as those into the Huddersfield area, it had gained access to Barnsley and had long established itself as a port-to-port -port system stretching from Liverpool to Goul via Manchester, the Calder Valley mainline, Wakefield and Pontefract. As an east-west route, it was tended to play second string to the former London and North Western line once the grouping had taken effect. And the decline gradually continued, culminate in 1970 in the withdrawal of the through York-Manchester trains. Malvern Wright Station, seen here about 1900, looks fairly conventional from platform level, but in fact is a perch on the steepy sloping valley side, and the buildings on the left are three storey above the roadway. A York Manchester dining car express near Malvern Wright, in pre-grouping days headed by Atlantic, number 4124. Much of the Calder Valley main line has been quadrupled by 1906, but on certain sections a harsh topography prevented such work from being put in hand. The Lancashire and Yorkshire made a pioneer attempt in 1907 to combat tram car competition by introducing steam rail motors on its branches from Greetland to Stainton and Sobby Bridge to Rishworth. One such train with an additional trailer coach is shown at West Vale Station on the Stainland branch about 1926. On both branches, new rail level halts were opened as an additional inducement to passengers. Here, rail motor number one, the original coach, is pausing at Watson's Crossing Halt on the Rishworth branch. The rail motors did not achieve a long term success, and both branches lost their passenger services in 1929. Copley Tunnel on this direct line from Halifax to Sober Bridge opened in 1852. A Lancashire and Yorkshire Atlantic is emerging from the tunnel portal. Pomp and circumstance military style at Halifax Station with unrebuilt Scott number 6145 as the centrepiece. It was being renamed, losing the prosaic Condor and becoming the Duke of Wellington Regiment West Riding. The West Riding Railway scene personified at Northbridge Station on the Halifax and Ovendale Junction Railway 
generally owned by the Great Northern and Lancashire and Yorkshire companies. The four wheel carts, generally down at heel appearance on the post advertising funerals, completely furnished. All contribute to the period flavour. Wyke and Norwood Green on the Halifax and Bradford line had its main buildings on the roadway above the station. This view, dating from about 1925, is looking north towards the 1,365 yard Wyke Tunnel. The Lancashire and Yorkshire's finest terminus in the West Riding was a Bradford Exchange. With a double arch roof, 242T number 10806 is departing on a local service in October 1946. Two decades later, the condition of the roof was causing serious concern, and in 1973, the station was closed to be replaced by a smaller terminus forming part of the new transport interchange. One of the major stations in the area was being completely obliterated is Lomar. In that same day as the point to where Leeds Central to Manchester services would combine with a portion from Bradford Interchange. The introduction of diesel units in 1962 made it practical for these services to serve Bradford en route by means of the reversal at exchange, and thus Lawmore lost its main reason for existence and closed only three years later. Another junction, now shown, of mostly its form glory is Murfield. Like the Low Moor, once infamous of a point where passengers were become awaiting desultory connections. The company, as if proud of its lamentable timekeeping, provided a billiard saloon on the station to help while away the passing hours. This view is looking east from the station, with a coal train passing on an unusually quiet locomotive shed. A pre-grouping study of Dalton Station on the Horbury barnsley Exchange Line, looking north towards Wakefield. This route was promoted in 1846 with the extraordinary long title of the Sheffield, Rotherham, Barnsley, Wakefield, Huddersfield and Gull Railway and was opened in 1850. Several changes had taken place at Darton in 1955 when this Wakefield Barnsley local paused at the station. The oil lamps had been superseded by gas and the signal box moved onto the platform. But stone sets were still in evidence. Coal on the move. A 080 number 79 storms along the Calder Valley main line at Horbury. The first four wagons of this evocative photograph are private owned trucks. Part of a vast fleet which once added much colour and interest to freight trains. In the twilight period of steam power, Britannia class 462, number 70026, Polar Star, simmers inside Wakefield Kirkgate on a parcels train. Wakefield still has two stations, the other being Westgate. The Wakefield Pontefract and Gull Railway, absorbed by Lancashire and Yorkshire in 1847, was notable for the over-decorated nature of many of its stations. This trend is clearly shown at Featherstone, between Wakefield and Pontefract, with the elaborate gables and roof arrangements. Norton on the line from Pontefract to Doncaster displays ostentatiousness to the point of absurdity. The station was closed in 1947, but is still in use as a private residence. 